chapter XLVIII, Arcana 6, 9, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 20. The 20th Arcanum is Resurrection. This is very important. It is stated in occult esotericism that Hiram Abif, or uh, Hiram Osiris, is dead in the ninth sphere, in the heart of the earth. It is said that in order to reach the sepulchre, we must pass through the nine underground cellars, the nine strata of the interior of our planetary organism. This ninth sphere is in our human organism. It is the sex. Yes, the intimate Christ is dead in the sex, and the resurrection of him is only possible in sex. The subject matter about the resurrection is something grandiose. Jonah was in the belly of the whale for three days, and Jesus resurrected on the third day. This is symbolic. The great whale of Jonah is the same Earth, our very planetary organism. The three days are symbolic because these are three periods of esoteric work before reaching the resurrection of the intimate Christ within ourselves. The first day, the second birth. The second day, the killing of the three traitors. Remember, the three traitors are uh, symbols for the three, what, the three out of four bodies of sin, astral, mental, and causal. Evil will, or rather, let's start with uh, ill will, ill intention. Um, I can't remember what it's called, but it's the, it's the inferior mental body and then evil, uh, uh, evil will. Yeah, the causal body is evil will. The astral body has ill will, but it also has desire. And so on. So the third day, the resurrection of the Lord. Here we find the three traitors, sorry, the uh, three factors of the revolution of the consciousness. To die, to be born, to sacrifice for humanity. Lob Song Rampa stated that he was as if dead for three days inside of a, uh, a sarcophagus. This is symbolic. There is no school that does not talk about these three days. Various pseudo-esoteric schools emphasize the fact that these three days must be endured in a sepulcher in order to attain realization of the self. Lobsang Rampa said that in that interval of time of three days, his body lay as if he were dead in the grave, and that he learned many things in the superior worlds. This is a symbolic initiatic ceremony that delivers a, a to, te uh, to us a teaching. However, we must make a differentiation between the symbolic teaching and the teaching that is lived. Jesus was in the sepulchre and he resurrected after three days. Then he remained for 11 years teaching and instructing. The Pisti Sophia refers to this. It was well known in the archaic times about these three days in the sepulchre. In the traditions of the Samo Thracians, Samo Thracians, Samo uh, Thracians, and among the Mayans, the Egyptians, and the Aztecs, the sepulchre and the three days are found. The aspirants to adepthood were taken to volcanoes, chambers, or closed sepulchres which had the form of a fish. Let us remember that the coffin of Osiris in the ancient Egypt of the pharaohs in the sunny land of Kem had the form of a fish. This reminds us of Oannes, 
who remained for three days within his sepulchre, a tradition which has been lost in the profound night. It is stated by ancient traditions that are lost within the frightful night of all times, that during this interval, while the body of that of the initiate was laid down as a cadaver within the coffin, the soul which was absent from the dense human form ex experienced directly in the superior worlds the ritual of life and death. Masonry has not forgotten its coffin. There is something which shows that Tuesday Lobsang Rampa and other authors do not possess an integral knowledge. This is due to the fact that they mistake the funeral symbol of the three days with the crude reality hidden within the depth of it. It is as if we get confused with the flag, which is a symbol, or confused with the two columns, um, Zahin and uh, Boaz, which are an esoteric symbol representing man and the woman. Likewise, the funeral coffin is a symbol. In ancient times, there was the custom of leaving the initiate three days within the sepulcher. But everything has its limits, and beyond that limit, we have to develop all of the knowledge. Uh, it is necessary to go deep in the reality. This is why it is necessary to be more profound in these studies. In the ancient Egypt of the pharaohs, when Typhon had the form of a fish, he cut the body of Osiris into pieces. When Isis, the Divine Mother, spouse and sister of Osiris, intended to resurrect him, she only found 13 pieces. Uh, the 14th piece, which was the phallus, was not found. 13 is death. It is obvious that Osiris must pass three days in the sepulcher, and those three days are equivalent to the three steps of the decapitation of the ego. Isis found 13 pieces, and she did not find the 14th, the phallus, because every lustful element was already dead in him. He attained a complete death. Only like this can Osiris present himself victorious in the temple of Ma'at, the truth. Only like this can he utter the negative confession, because he no longer has ego. He has a pure spirit. The subjective matter about Osiris in the sepulchre is very important. He is completely dead, and only on the third day is he resurrected. One is generation, two is G degeneration, three is regeneration. The extraordinary and marvelous form of the old coffin of Osiris, because of its likeness and significance, naturally brings into the memory another fish which is magnificently represented in the uh, Semitic, Semitic alphabet by the letter um, Samech, which is a letter that occupies the 15th Kabbalistic place, which in the beginning undoubtedly symbolized the famous constellation of the whale, a constellation under which we have to perform all of the works in the ninth sphere. This constellation is related with the event of Jonah and also related with the measurements of the coffin of Osiris, which has the form of a fish. This is why Osiris had to descend into the black and terrifying prince, uh, precipice in order to pass through the three days in the belly of the whale. This is intimately related with the 13th Arcanum, in other words, three descents into the infernal worlds. Each descent takes a period of time and gives three days in the Holy Sepulchre. Jonah worked three days, three periods, with sex, and at the end of the three days, the whale vomited him, and afterwards he went to preach. And it's interesting to note that three uh, days per period of these three periods would equal nine, three, six, nine altogether. The whale corresponds to the 15th Kabbalistic Arcanum, and this invites us to reflect. The 15th Arcanum is Typhon, Baphomet, the devil, the animal passion. This invites us to comprehend what the work in the ninth sphere, sex, is. 
If one fails in the 13th, 14th, and 15th arcana, if one is not capable to work within the whale, then it is obvious that one goes downward towards the precipice with the 16th arcanum, which is the fulminated tower. The initiate who spills the glass of Hermes will be fulminated by the 16th arcanum of the constellation of Ares. The initiate, straightened by the lightning of cosmic justice, will fall from the tower with the head aiming downwards and the legs aiming upwards as the inverted pentalpha. The 17th Synth Arcanum, the Star of the Hope, is for the individual who has never been fulminated to the one who is capable of reaching the Venustic initiation. If we add this Arcanum in itself, we have 1 plus 7, which equals 8. Ordeals and Sufferings, which is the number of Job related to that Ordeals and Sufferings. Uh, if we Kabbalistically add the numbers of the 15th Arcanum of the Constellation of the Whale, we will have the, have the following result. 1 plus 5 equals 6. The number 6 in the Tarot is the Arcanum of the Lover. It is the Arcanum, or the Lovers, I guess people call it. It is the Arcanum of the hum human soul who is between virtue and passion. You must be wisely polarized by the sixth arcanum in order to defeat the frightful fifteenth arcanum of the constellation of the whale. Remember, dear reader, that in the center of your chest you have a very special mag a magnetic point which captures the waves of light and glory that come from your human soul. Thus, human soul is Tifuret, the sixth arcanum of the Tauro. Listen and obey the orders which emanate from your human soul. Act in accordance with those intimate impulses. Work in the forge of the Cyclops when your soul requires it from you. If you learn to obey, you will not perish in the belly of the whale. Behold, you have turned into a fish who works within the chaotic waters of the first instant. Now you will comprehend why the coffin of the Osiris has the form of a fish. It is unquestionable that the seven days or periods in the book of Genesis of Moses are synthesized in these three days and three nights of Jonah within the belly of the whale. This is an initiatic ceremony that was repeated by the great Kabir Jesus in the Holy Sepulchre. The prophet Jonah, working under the regency of the constellation of the whale, being inside of the whale of the universe, the well of the universe, in the ninth sphere, sex, performed his work in three days or three more or less long periods. First day, he descends into the infernal worlds in order to build the solar bodies, the wedding garment of the soul, and to establish within himself a permanent center of consciousness. To descend into the infernos of nature is necessary. This is a period of elimination, elimination until destroying set, until achieving the second birth. Second day, he descends into the abyss in order to confront frightful sacrifices. He utilizes the creative energy for the destruction of the subjective elements of the ego. This work is performed in the lunar infernal worlds within the sublunar regions to which uh, the esoteric books refer. Then the three traitors of the intimate, uh, the intimate Christ, Judas, Pilate, and Caiaphas, are radically eliminated, as well as the atoms of the secret enemy. Also, the dragon of darkness, the red dragon, must be disintegrated. Then the work is continued by eliminating the submerged secondary beasts within the consciousness, uh, within which the consciousness is bottled up. Third day. One must return to the bottom of the abyss uh, in order to finish with the innumerable degrees, sorry, deeds from previous lives. One continues dying in the spheres of Mercury, Venus, Sun, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, and so on. And on the third day, the black waters are transformed into resplendent light, and the destruction of ancient atoms culminate with the mystical resurrection. Each one of the three days culminates with the following. 
A, the first period of time concludes with the second birth, of which the great Kabir Jesus spoke unto the Rabbi Nicodemus. The second period finishes when the consciousness is liberated, with a marvelous wedding resulting. The wedding of the human soul with the Valkyrie of Guinevere, the queen of the jinns, who is the spiritual and feminine soul, Budi, within which the flame of the spirit is always burning, the flame of Brahma. Unto the women we say that they get married with the eternal beloved one. The third period magist, uh, magisterially and concludes with the resurrection of the intimate Christ within our heart. The ascension into the superior worlds comes as a logical consequence. Now we are just receiving information, but one must live and experience this information directly. Do not stray, but keep firm. You must study the prayer of Jonah. It is precious. Magnificent esoteric arcana are enclosed in it. You must study the book of Jonah in the Old Testament. Investigate all of the archaic information concerning these three days. They must be comprehended very deeply because many people are ignorant about the work in the subterranean world. Indeed, this subject matter is related with the 12th card of the Tarot because one plus two equals three, three days. In this card, a man is hanged or hung from his foot and forms a cross with his legs. His arms form a triangle with his head aiming downwards. All this indicates to us that he descends into the well of the abyss. This is the apostolate. There are 22 arcana because 22 is the truth. The tetragrammaton, the iod hai vav hai, and there must be 22 arcana in order to clarify it. What is signified by Jesus rising out of the sepulcher? What is signified by Jonah being vomited out of the belly of the whale after being three days within it? An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the whale's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Matthew chapter 12, lines 39 to 40. This is symbolic. Jonah states that he was submerged within the waters and into the bottom of the mountains. The earth with her bars was about him forever. But he cried from within the profundities of the earth unto Jehovah. The abyss that closed around him is very significant. By going into this more profoundly, let us remember the Le Leviathan, Leviathan, that marvelous fish that lives beneath the waters of the sea. Uh, Isaiah 27, line 1, Job chapter 41, line 1, Psalm chapter 74, line 14, uh, I guess, and 1, chapter 104. 104, line 26. I guess these are all the references. This is the first day when we submerge within ourselves. It is that day when all of us must descend into the subterranean worlds in order to build the bodies which will grant us unto us the second birth. The first day is when we have to descend into the bottom of the Tartarus. Thus, uh, as the law of Leviathan Le, or le in the second day it is necessary to return to the bottom of the abyss in order to remain there until the creations that we made with our evil actions are destroyed it is indubitable that superlative superlative transformation is only possible possible with the resurrection of the intimate christ in the heart of the human being this is the culminating step of the third day the instant in which the earth or the glowing constellation of the whale vomits out the prophet Jonah in order for him then to go and teach it or teach 
at Nineveh, Nineveh, in order for him to return unto the Father. Jonah was converted into a resurrected master after being vomited from the whale. He then was sent to a, uh, to teach. For that reason, he has a right to the ascension. Every exaltation is preceded by a humiliation. The humiliation is the descent into the infernal worlds. These three days will give us an answer related with something more profound. Whosoever has understanding, let this person understand. It is necessary to comprehend and meditate that the Leviathan, that one who is moving through the waters, is the true master that has been decapitated and decapitated again. Who is capable of decapitating the Leviathan? Who is capable of hurting the one who has already received all harms and become resurrected? Let us be converted into resurrected masters. The cross as symbol is one thing, but the work that we have to perform in the ninth sphere is another. The symbol and the work are correlated. All of the progress in these studies is based on the Kabbalah. The 13th and 14th arcana have not been well understood.